Hey guys, in today's episode, Alex and I go over how to never be late for anything again, as well as how Alex stopped being fat and how competition was one of the absolute best things for our relationship and marriage. We can't wait for you guys to listen, and we hope you share this with a friend that you think would benefit from it as well. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and we'll catch you on the inside. Alex, we are now one week down of dieting. How are you feeling one week in? I feel like we're getting leaner together. <laughs> I feel as though this is the first diet that I've had for a long time. And so naturally, anyone starting a diet, if you are able to adhere to things 100%, you think that you should get all the benefit in the world. You should see 10 pounds fall off, right? I did not see that in week one. Now, I did see a good drop in the scale from a, a coaching standpoint. If, if I was the one coaching myself, I would have been thrilled with the number. But being the client now, it uh, is a little bit different. And I would have liked to see more happen, if you will. But uh, it's just a, a good learning experience to to be back in this on this side of things. And uh, I'm I'm just really excited for what's uh, to happen as we continue through the diet phase, as well as just this being a different challenge than I've had in a long time. And so I'm, I'm excited for it. How have you felt after week one? I think that going through a diet is really helpful as a coach or just going through any Thing that you're asking your clients to go through because we talk a lot about walking the walk. If I'm going to ask someone to do something, then I think it's really positive for me to go through that experience as well. Not only so I can empathize with them, but if you haven't dieted for a really long time, sometimes you forget some of the hardships, whether they're mental hardships or physical hardships when it comes to dieting. And same with bulking or whatever the opposite of what you've been doing. So I think it's really positive to go through it to really be able to help your clients further and just know where they're coming from as well. For myself, I'm really happy with the effort that I put in the first week, honestly, both of us, because there were a lot of things that came up that we could have made an excuse for. And I think a big thing about the first week of a diet is just keeping the promises that you made to yourself. Because if you start off with that rocky foundation of a few things coming up, that would be very easy to just sidestep some of those goals that you've set out for yourself, then I feel like it's really hard to keep going and keep yourself on track. And so even though there's likely going to be things throughout this 12 weeks that might throw us a little bit off kilter, really being able to start that first week strong and prove to ourselves that we could get everything done with all of the other craziness on our plate, I think was really powerful to get started. But of course, you know, just like you said, there's times where you step on the scale and you're like, I did everything. Why is that number not going where I want it to? And in my case, it did originally go down. But then uh, the other day I stepped on the scale and it was up two pounds. And prior Sue would have been like, okay, I need to do more cardio. I need to cut more food. I need to quote, make up for the fact that I didn't lose weight. But current Sue can really take a look at that and recognize that that's some inflammation from a really hard leg session that we both absolutely bottomed ourselves in. It was also inflammation from just the amount of steps because we increased my steps as well as I went maybe a little bit too hard in yoga. Uh, and so there's a few different aspects there that would cause that scale weight to be up. And being able to truly understand that context allows me to know that, hey, hey, that scale weight is up, but it doesn't mean it's going to stay up. And it doesn't mean that I didn't take the right action to get to where I, in the end, want to go. And I think today's topic that we're speaking on in today's episode is one in which we're going to lean heavily on throughout this diet phase and learning ways or, or understanding yourself better to be able to hack yourself, if you will, and, and find easier ways for you to do things is the best thing that you can do for yourself in a diet, because a, a diet in and of itself is going to be already challenging to begin with, but then giving yourself uh, more of a position behind the eight ball, if you will, by not making things a little bit easier on yourself for the things that are within your control is going to make things even that much more difficult. So do you want to give us a little bit of an intro, if you will, on uh, how to hack yourself? 
Yes. I think that sometimes people think within fitness that there's no way to hack fitness. It's just about doing the hard work and being consistent. And while I 100% agree it's about doing work and being consistent, I think that you can really use your weaknesses and your strengths to your advantage and being able to tune into who you are. And that's a lot of what we do within our coaching is looking at the individual and being able to build a plan around that. And so when we look at what a hack is, I'm sure you've heard the term like a life hack, but it's usually a simple or clever tip or technique for accomplishing some familiar task more easily and efficiently. And it's about eliminating life's many frustrations in simple and clever ways. Also known as any trick, shortcut, skill, or novelty method that increases productivity and efficiency. But really at the core of it, it's about learning about yourself and, like I said, using those weaknesses and strengths to your advantage. What are some tendencies that you know about yourself that have stopped you from accomplishing a goal in the past? Uh, how much time we got? <laughs> Got How much time do we got? <laughs> uh, this is something that it, you're. It's ever evolving, right? You're you are finding different things in the certain chapter of your life that you're going to have to hack, if you will, to put yourself in a better position. Because the the hacks that I may have utilized when I was in my early twenties, now that I'm in my latter twenties in my early 20s are going to be different than the hacks that I have now because my life is very different uh, as a whole. And so the first tendency that comes to mind for me is that I very commonly will stack my plate far too full. You don't say. I will create deadlines that are ridiculous in nature that I think in my mind, I create this perfect environment of no stress and, and nothing that's going to come up. And I'm going to be focused from the moment that I wake to the time that I go to sleep. And there's not going to be any break whatsoever. That's how my mind naturally flows. So I think that I'm going to be able to, to complete every task that's ever been created in that single 24 hours. And so I have a hack, if you will, where if I think that something's going to be done tomorrow, I generally add a day or I add two days type situation just to give myself an understanding of, okay, although I think in my mind that I can certainly do this, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a breather or space to be able to actually accomplish the thing because there is no worser feeling for me than letting someone down that I gave them my word. And if I say, okay, I'm going to have this to you by this time, I do not like letting that fall to the wayside. It's one of the things that bothers me the absolute most. So my tendency is to stuff my plate too full. Thus, I give myself a little bit of a greater buffer period than what I generally would provide from a due date or deadline perspective. And does this help your mentality as well of just, you mentioned you hate letting people down, of course, but I know that when it comes to putting something on my to-do list and just not accomplishing it, then I feel like I'm letting myself down as well. And so how do you feel like that goes towards just your mentality and being able to continue with those days so stacked full by giving yourself that buffer? So it's a double-edged sword because another tendency of mine is to procrastinate. So if I give myself more time, I'm generally going to continue to wait until the last moment to do the thing and just put the stress on myself because my brain has responded very well to just high stress, high cortisol, high I have ADHD type symptoms, okay? So this is something where by giving myself the buffer, I also have to be more organized and I have to be okay with not completing the task that moment that I sit down to do it. I have to be okay with completing 30% here and 30% here to have the ability to submit it at the right time and not wait till the last moment because I've had to get out of the habit of as soon as I sit down to do something, I've got to do all of it. And if I can't do all of it, then I'm not going to do it at all. And that is a really poor way of thinking and is a deep, deep hole of anxiety, I feel like, because it's just looming in your mind and you are trying to find this perfect time to be able to accomplish this pretty big task potentially. And you're trying to find a 
period of time that's long enough to where you can complete it. Where in reality, if you just took an hour here and 30 minutes here and an hour there, you could probably get it all done. It's just a matter of not marrying yourself to completing the task in one sitting. And so by having the organization, that is the, the biggest thing. Because if I don't have the organization, then I'm just in the same spot at a different date. And so I have to combine those two things to hack myself and put things in a little bit of an easier pursuit for me. I have something sort of similar. It has to do with, yes, putting too much on my plate, but also having awful time blindness and being late to a lot of things. So first I started off with one of them because you can't just fix everything at one go. And so my first hack with being late to everything was being able to put it in my calendar like 10 to 15 minutes earlier. So I had a buffer if I was going to be late and I didn't have all of this anxiety because I'm running into the situation late. And I'll sometimes even trick myself of when you ask when something is and I'll tell you a time and we're we're running behind and I think we're going to be late. And then I look again, I'm like, oh, that actually isn't for another 15 or so minutes. But now we're going to be on time because I told us to get ready early or told me to get ready early, uh, which has been really helpful just for my peace of mind, as well as no one likes being late and being the one everyone's waiting on and being the one that is known for being late. That's a really defeating feeling. And so I don't want to do that as well as the respect that I have for other people's time. And I want them to have respect for my time. And so being on time and timely in general is important uh, to me. And another aspect of that that I mentioned is time blindness. And this also comes down to thinking that tasks that are simple just don't take time. And so it was a big part of understanding things take time. And so the way that I hacked this was being able to do some time studies for myself and timing myself throughout the day, because it brought a lot of realization to me of how long these, quote, simple tasks were taking, where I thought, oh, just putting away things in the dishwasher and unloading it, that's so simple, it takes no time at all. Where it's not that it takes a ton of time, but it might take 5, 10, 15 minutes. And if I didn't buffer any time in the day for it, and I think I'm going to get that done, then that's obviously going to push my schedule. And so being really honest with myself about not only how long something takes by timing myself and then putting it in my schedule as that time, but then being able to schedule my day accordingly as well so that that I don't get to the point where there's so much on my plate that I there's no physical way for me to complete it all. And then I feel down about myself of moving tasks to another day because I thought I could get it done that day. That happens a lot less often. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> happens a lot less often now that I time myself and I regularly audit myself of every few weeks or every few months, especially if there's a new change to my schedule or a new goal or expectation that I have of myself of being able to ensure that I have time to do it. I think the change in your schedule is the one that has paid the greatest dividends because putting it in your schedule of when you should leave relative to when it actually is happening yes. <laughs> is such a huge help because both of us fall into this category where we would put the time when whatever the thing was started and we live where we live is like at minimum 20 minutes to everything. Yeah. That's like the base, which is fortunate, unfortunate, whatever you want to look at, it's the reality of things. And so that's always going to be a minimum buffer, if not longer. And so having that in place where previously you or I would start getting ready 30 minutes before the thing was to start thinking that this is going to take no time to shower, brush your teeth, do, do your, like all the things, find an outfit, find an outfit, make sure you like it, all those. It, it would take 30 minutes in and of itself. And then all of a sudden you're actually supposed to be there. And now you're running out of the, the kitchen frantic. I can't find my wallet. Where Never are my can. keys? Where are my sunglasses? Where's all my stuff? I have no idea where it's at. And so <laughs> having that in place is a huge, huge help. And also just continue to reiterate to yourself that it's starting at the time that you're supposed to leave because you can also kind of play a little bit of a trick on yourself. Well, eh, I'm supposed to leave at that time. It's not when it's actually starting. So I just continue to reiterate, like, I have to, I have to leave. This is when this starts so that I'm getting ready beforehand. And it's been a, a game changer.
A hundred percent because that was, I used to think that I could just teleport. That's the thing that I would like to do the most is I would leave as something was starting because that's when it was in my calendar. But it has been huge to literally just put that 30 minute buffer before and after. And it's great because like you said, most things are about like 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. And so if it is less than 30 minutes, then I have a little bit of leeway or I can get there early even and have some time for myself. And it just makes things go so much smoother to have it in there because that's how my brain functions. And that's what I always think about with all of these aspects of how to hack yourself. I ask myself, how can I make life easier when life is busy? How can I make things easier for myself when life is busy? And so really being able, me talking about strengths and weaknesses, if I have a weakness or a tendency I know about myself, how can I, quote, hack myself to make it work? And when I'm looking at a few different things, I know that for like food or fitness or life, there's a bunch of other things outside of the few that we just talked about that really allow us to show up. So diving into this diet a little bit more, what is something that you know about yourself, whether it's within working out or food or getting your steps in, that is a hard barrier for you that you've put in a hack to help out? Before I answer that, I think that it's important to speak on negative self-talk because I think that this is something, this is, we've talked about this on the podcast where it is the easier route to just have negative self-talk and say, be better, do this better. And the reality is, is that you're going to have strengths and you're going to have weaknesses. And those weaknesses can be converted to strengths over time and with consistent effort and those different factors. But some of those weaknesses just need to be understood. And like, this is a tendency that I continue to have time and time again. How can I change the narrative to put myself into a better position? Because it's not a matter of just saying do better because I fell into that for a very long time. And then I was just constantly frustrated with myself for continuing to make the same mistake over and over again. And so getting to a place where you're recognizing and then what are the tools that you can put into place to better facilitate that environment to not happen again. It's not that it's never going to happen again. We still run into some of these things that we're saying we have a hack for and run into issues and fall behind and so on and so forth, but it's going to happen significantly less. And and let me be a testament to this of I was Mr. Negative Self-Talk and now still experience it from time to time, but significantly less because of some of these hacks and tendencies that I've identified to put myself into a better position. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. So to your question on how I'm hacking my steps and and those different factors, I think that when I'm looking at daily activity, pulling myself away from my desk is one of the more challenging things because I have a lot of things to do on a day-to-day basis. I have a lot of people depending on me, needing things back from me, et cetera. And so it's really easy for me to just sit at my desk 10 to 12 hours a day and just think I'm cranking away. There's, there's periods there where my work quality and efficiency tapers off, as you can imagine, in the sense of sitting at my desk that long, that's ridiculous. And so it is a challenge for me mentally to take that step away. But I know once I'm very consistent with activity throughout the day, my work is better. I'm enjoying my work more. I'm in a better mood in all these different aspects. And so pushing myself to track my time in which I am sitting at my desk, I like to be sitting at my desk for two hours at the longest for a continuous period and then have to go do something that's, uh, you know, not necessarily physically challenging, but playing with the dogs or going on a W, because I'm not going to say (laughs) W-A-L-K. Both of them are in here and they're going to go bonkers if I say that out loud. And taking those small moments throughout the day, just 20 minutes here, 30 minutes here to get some activity outside, especially as the weather's getting a little bit better here in Ohio. It's not perfect this (laughs) week, but it's better. Having that time is 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 huge for me. And also when we're talking about being in this dieting phase, it's something where 
I could wait until the end of the day and do like a 75 minute walk in my mind. It's like, no, I'll just wait until this evening and then just do a super long walk type situation. I've done it. It's not advisable. I don't enjoy it, (laughs) but it's something that I kind of, you know, run into from time to time. But I also know that I feel so much better when I space out the steps throughout the day. And so understanding these different aspects and in which I just said, I feel better when I take small breaks from work. I feel better when I break up the walks throughout the day rather than having it all at the end of the day, understanding those things and just continuing to reiterate to myself of, I want to be the best version of myself. I know these things get me one step closer to being that? Why would I neglect doing these things knowing that my ultimate goal is to be the best version of myself? And so making that, you know, having that negotiation with myself is huge on a regular basis because it is a no brainer to make the decision to, to do those things. Absolutely. And just for anyone listening who's a little bit lost with us talking about this dieting phase, we are, by the time you're listening or watching this, about three or four weeks in. So if you haven't been watching along on YouTube, then we'll leave the first few episodes linked in the description box so that you can go check those out. Another thing that I think for you that's been really helpful in this first week, and I'll go with the walks first, is that Uh, We do like taking a walk in the evening after we've eaten dinner and just to spend some time for each other when it's nice outside. But we had a little bit of a fake spring situation happen, and then it put us back into winter, and now it looks like we're headed back into spring, hopefully. But yesterday, it was gross and rainy all day, and both of us knew we didn't want to be out super late because it was gross and rainy and cold, and that we didn't want to go on a long walk because the walks were not enjoyable at all. And you saw that early on in the day. And instead of waiting for if it was nice, we would have gone on a 30 to 40 minute walk, it wouldn't have been that 75 minutes, but that would have been fine for you to save steps for but you saw the weather you understood that we weren't going to go on one, even though we didn't talk about it. And you were very proactive with getting that done. And while that isn't necessarily a hack, it comes down to the core of this of knowing yourself. And I always ask the question, how can I make future Sue's life easier? And with you talking about, I know that this makes me feel better. Why would I not do it? That's what I always remind myself time and time again. And I weigh the pros and cons. And if the pro of the outcome is worth it more to me than the con of doing the action, then I'm 100% going to do the action. We've talked about before that like laundry isn't our 100% favorite, but I love the outcome of having all of my clothes clean and folded and put away versus having them all in piles everywhere and dirty. And so I'll do the task that I don't want to do. Same with meal prep of it makes us so makes life so easier, much easier for us to just have the food prepped. Although doing the action of prepping the food isn't always the most fun. I remind myself of what it's going to give me in the long run. So the other thing that I was going to say for you is being able to have your meals pre-tracked in my fitness pal and not just pre-tracking the whole day although that helps you a ton it's just being able to have your core meals saved in there as meals so you're not having to add each meal by hand individual items you can just search okay this is my sweet and sour chicken meal this is my sweet potato beef and squash rice meal and I think that sets you up for a ton of success because it's very discouraging first getting to the end of the day trying to remember everything that you ate and tracking it and then possibly seeing that you're not hitting your numbers or you have a super odd allotment of numbers left over. But it's also just tedious to have to type out absolutely every single thing. And you know that if those aren't added in there, you're likely not going to type it all out. And so we went through and saved your meals. So now it's super easy for you to plug and play. And that's a way that you took something that might be viewed as a weakness of yourself or not even a weakness, just a tendency. And you were able to set yourself up for success and get that planned out beforehand. I think that when it comes to nutrition and just habits in general, you're wanting to make the things that you're wanting to do as frictionless as possible and the things that you're trying to avoid as frictioned 
as possible. And I think that what you're speaking to of having things be pre-tracked and those different factors makes it tremendously frictionless. And you have to get to a point where it is silly for you to not make the right decision. If you can, if you can make it happen and, and get to that point, it's really important to do. And it, it's a, a simple thing that can just be added into your day to, to remove adversity and challenge and uh, put yourself in a better position. You had actually brought this to my mind, maybe it was a week or two ago, where you said that you were going to stop at Chipotle on your way home, but you realized you wanted food at home more, and you were just double-checking that we had food ready. And that's a perfect example of removing that friction of, if you didn't have food ready, you were going to go out to eat. And not that going to Chipotle or going out to eat is the end of the world, but you knew that you would feel better and be more aligned with the goals that you had if you ate the food that was prepped at home. And because it was prepped, it was an super easy decision of, I don't want to waste food that I've already made or paid for, and I enjoy this food, so why wouldn't I just go home and eat instead of going out and grabbing something? And that's normally the first example I give to people, and I thought it was just so perfect when you had called me to ask, because I 100%, if the food isn't ready and made, that's when I fall into either under eating or ordering food out or just grabbing a lot of snacks that I'm not going to feel satiated because it's not easy for me to eat my meals. And that's a huge reason and a hack that we use is either pre-planning our meals or pre-prepping our meals so that everything is good to go throughout our days. Because I know for myself, decision fatigue is like my crutch <laughs> through and through. I I cannot make too many decisions in a day because it is extremely fatiguing to me. And food is one that always has been. My family loves to tell the stories that I would just lay on the kitchen floor and continuously ask my mom what I should eat that day because I had already made so many decisions and deciding on what I wanted to eat was just – it it had escaped me. It was too many things that I had done for the day. And so now just having things pre-planned makes my days go so much more seamlessly. And not everyone is this way. Again, it's about hacking yourself, but being able to know you run into decision fatigue, you have a hard time when it comes to deciding your food. What's one way I can make life easier for myself? Having it pre-planned, pre-tracked, pre-prepared, ready to go. Now, when it comes to training, one thing that I know about myself big time is as the day goes on, my motivation to train goes down. And instead of beating myself up for not wanting to train later in the day with how I have used my energy earlier in the day, I put a big effort on training earlier in the day because I know that I'm going to be much more motivated. I'm going to use my motivation to my advantage. And on the days that I'm not motivated, then I have that consistency of, hey, you normally train at this time. This is just when you go in there and get it done. And it's planned in my schedule. And that helps me so much more than having it just shift around my day. It's really taking that priority and what I know about myself to make sure that I am kind of sidestepping that difficult nature of it. Yeah, I think that having the scheduling of things and having it already put into your schedule is very important for your training because I think that too often individuals find themselves in a scenario where they just say that they're going to the gym at some point today. They're going to find the available moment to be able to go to the gym. And more often than not, it's just going to keep getting pushed back because you're going to be able to find excuse after excuse as to why right now is not the right time for you to go and train. And so getting those into your calendar before the week starts or the day before or what have you is going to be very helpful. Even if you have to move it, it still keeps things in your calendar and it blocks off that time to where you're not thinking you're going to go do something else type situation. Another hack that I would say is that when we know we're going to have a really hard session, we try to train together on those days uh, because it does help tremendously to have a friend, a, a training partner of, of any sort be there to push you along because you're much more likely to get after the session that's really difficult when you have a little bit of an audience. I say this about when I'm, I'm filming my training is that I turn on a little bit extra 
I get a little bit extra strength. I get a little bit extra exercise execution, uh, greatness, if you will, added to my set when that camera turns on. And so there are times where I will go out there and film every set that I have for no other reason than I am being a pansy and I don't want to be out there to train at all. I, I don't want to be out there. So I will literally film every set because I'm like, I do not want a single ounce of footage out there of me sandbagging myself. And so I will record from my warm up to the end and that happens. And so having those just small accountability hacks are huge whether that be training partner, filming your working sets, what have you, um, I think is a, a really helpful tool with your with your training. I think it's hilarious that you mentioned that because I didn't know you were going to mention that. And literally last week I was training and I didn't want to be in there and I was filming it uh, to be able to have some clips for YouTube. And as I was going through one of the sets, I was thinking, man, if I wasn't filming right now, I would either be doing less weight or I just really wouldn't be focusing on the execution the way that I am. If I would have let my core go a little bit more, I would have gotten a little bit lazy with the rep. But I was like, dang it, I'm on camera right now. I have to get it done. <laughs> and then I kind of laughed at myself of why can't you just hold yourself accountable? But if you know something about yourself, use it. Like use that, hey, I need that accountability. What's one way I can give that to myself? Having a training partner, videoing myself, training in a public gym, whatever that may be, really being able to get honest with yourself and use the things that you know to really get the most out, which another aspect, not only just training your session or programming when you're going to train throughout the week into your schedule, but having something to follow when it comes to training. Because I have been very seldomly in the past like six or seven years, been in a place where maybe I don't have a plan I'm following. And it is so easy to first just dilly dick in the gym because you don't really have a goal that you're going towards. But it's also just easy to be a little bit of a wimp because you're not going to do the exercises that are hard or that you don't want to do. I know if I programmed for myself, I would not ever have walking lunges. I would not ever have hip thrusts and a handful of other exercises that I would just say, I don't, I don't need those in there today. But with someone else programming, then I know you're going to put in what's best and I know I'm going to do it because I trust you and I'm able to carry that out. And so I think a huge thing for myself is having a plan to follow because again, it's one less decision I have to make throughout the day. And any way I can make my life easier for myself, I'm going to freaking do it. I use this analogy with clients and, and I talk about if we're not going to have a goal and a plan in place and those different factors, it's as if we're going to the gun range, we load up that gun and everything's pitch black. There's no target. It's like, shoot, just shoot. What, what am I shooting at? I have no, why would I shoot this gun? Shooting in the dark. Why am I doing this? And so it's one of those situations where you have to understand that you're going to have much greater results, much greater progress if you have those targets in front of you uh, as you're continuing to, um, through your fitness journey, through your life, all these different factors. Because if it's just a matter of, I need to go to the gym because it's good for me. It's like, that's going to work sometimes. But in terms of making actual progress to your body composition, to your strength and those different factors, you've got to have something out in front of you that you're chasing. And it doesn't have to be, I'm losing this amount of weight or I'm gaining this amount of weight. It could simply be, today I'm looking at my logbook, I did a set on Bul Bulgarian split squats for a uh, set of six for with 70 pound dumbbells. And this week I'm going to get seven or this week I'm going to try the 75s for six, something along those lines to give you something, give you something incremental that you're challenging yourself and, and pushing yourself to be better than you were previously. And you're not going to the gun range with no target and a loaded gun. And you're like, I have no idea what I'm looking at. <laughs> And now I do have like the ultimate life hack for myself and it is this iPad. Okay. This iPad has literally allowed me to do so many things I don't want to do in life. And the secret behind it is it is first like the perfect size to carry around because it's the iPad mini, but 
I don't have a ton of time to like watch TV throughout the day. And I've expressed before of when I'm working, I'm more of a fan of silence than having things on. And so if there's TV shows or YouTube or something that I want to be caught up on, most of the time I, I don't get to watch that. And when it comes to us spending time together in the evening, there's shows that we watch separately. And so then it goes maybe a week or two without me being able to watch something that I enjoy. So that's where this iPad comes in. And I take this with me all around this house. I used it all through prep when I was on the treadmill to watch TV and to watch YouTube and all of that. I use it when I'm folding laundry. I use it when I'm making food or meal prepping. Uh, I use it when I am doing my hair or makeup. And it has just been the ultimate little carrot to hang out in front of myself of, hey, you really don't want to be doing this laundry right now, but you get 20 minutes to watch your show. So we're going to go ahead and watch this show and not really think about the laundry and just get it done. And so being able to use something that I don't get to do super often and use it as a reward for something I don't love to do makes the time go by faster and just allows me to actually get excited when I have certain chores because then I know, okay, I have 20 or 30 minutes to watch whatever it is. Even last night, I was uh, getting stock for our t-shirts and I just had on my iPad and was watching something and it just... I was just watching TV, but I was also getting work done. And it is the ultimate best thing for me. I don't think I will ever go without an iPad. So I need to thank you for buying me this iPad. I was going to say, this, this, was, this was a gift from your husband. Yes. So you're welcome. I'm so glad that you love <laughs> that gift uh, so abundantly. And it's funny that you talk about working in complete silence because I am the opposite. Yes. Uh, because if I'm working in complete silence, that is when my brain wanders to 50 other places than what I'm actually supposed to be focusing on. And so having some lo-fi beats or just music that's going on in the background is my life, life saver because it allows for me to get kind of in a trance almost with my work. It allows for me to really focus on what's in front of me. Uh, I don't know if it's something auditory and visual. I have to have both going on at the same time for me to focus on the visual thing. Um, but but it is a, a huge help to me just to have some low volume music, just very subtle. It doesn't, and it can't have words. If it has words, it throws me off because what I'm reading, I get caught up in what I'm hearing. And so it has to be no words, even a, like a consistent sound that's almost the exact same is even fine. It's just a matter of having something in the background that is a, a huge help for me to be able to focus. You know, I do that with songs that have words, but it has to be a song that I'm very familiar with. And that's why sometimes I can't listen to new music when I'm trying to work is because I get too caught up in trying to listen to it. Whereas other music that I've heard a million times, I'm able to have that on or sometimes I'll just repeat the same song because I'm able to kind of get lost in the beats the same way that you do with lo-fi beats. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Now, one huge hack that we use both a ton is competition. <laughs> we both are very competitive people. We like to win and we do that with not only competition, but rewards. So I talked about of using my iPad as a little bit of a reward, some screen time. I feel like a child, uh, well, actually, did you ever have like screen restrictions as a child or like not allowed on the computer at certain times? I d not that I can recall. We had this system that was hooked up to the computer and we had time cards and like our parents could load the time cards, but you could only use your time card to log on. And as soon as your time was off, it would like lock you out of the computer. So that's what I feel like sometimes when I'm like rewarding myself, I'm like adding time on my time card. I'm sure your brother broke that system, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. He first, I think he might have been the one to find it to begin with. And then either knew where they hid the other card or was able to hack like the master card and add more time to his. I would imagine. Yeah, pretty cut and dry. <laughs> 
but uh, for even this dieting phase of having the vacation in front of us is huge motivation for us to get it done. And I know without something that I'm looking forward to, it's harder for me to accomplish a goal. But with the competition aspect, I'm not going to lose to you. And you're also not going to lose to me. And so it's really helpful for us to be doing this together, not only for the accountability, uh, because I do think it's so much easier to accomplish goals when we're in it together. And even my parents mentioned that the other night when they were asking us about the diet. And my mom said, I will 100% agree anytime that you, um, that me and your father have done something together, whether it's a dieting phase or whatever, we've been so much more successful. And so I think it's been really helpful to have that accountability, but also that underlying competition that we are not going to be, quote, beat by the other one. I think it's important to clarify that it's not a matter of who loses more weight. Yes, yes. It's not a matter of like, haha, I lost more weight than you this week. <laughs> Suck it. Um, it's more of the accountability in the sense of completing all the necessary tasks on a day-to-day basis and not letting the other person down in the sense of like, yo, I am just as busy as you are. I, we've got a lot of stuff going on. We're in this together and you are cutting yourself short because you're a bum. Like, don't be a bum. Just do the things that you know are going to uplift you because the things that we put into place, it's not in place to punish us. This is in place to better ourselves, to better our um, way of life and all those different aspects. Like all the the tenants that we have in place, spending time with the dogs, doing a house chore, getting steps outside, getting uh, our dietary intake and alignment, all these things are enhancing our life. They're not taking away. And so if it was something where it was uber restrictive and it was taking away from our quality of life, that's different. And I think that's where a lot of people's conflict comes into play when you have these competitions in place and it be something that you are doing with your partner or with your friend or or what have you, where it gets negative because you're, you're beating yourself up because you've made it about the weight or you've made it about metrics that really don't matter in the grand scheme of things and are not adding to your life, they're taking away. And so by setting this up, I, I feel as though that we have the the best formula, if you will, within the tenants and those different factors that allow for everything to just be enriching your life for the better uh, and allowing for each person just to keep the other accountable and you don't want to let the other person down. Yes, I very much so love how you phrase that because I think that competition between the two of us, I'm so used to the way that we go about it that I sometimes forget how other people look at it. And it's not, we, we have not always been like that. No. <laughs> like when we, when we first got married, competition was exactly what I was talking about in the negative sense. Like it was, we were competitive with one another almost to hurt one another type situation. Yeah, we like wanted it, to win. Exactly. Like we wanted to win. And if you hurt me, that meant I was going to hurt you more. And that back and forth is a, one, a very toxic environment Mm -hmm. to be in. And I'm very, very grateful that we have worked through to be well beyond that point now, you know, five years into our marriage. But that is something that competitive individuals have to to work through. Like that is not something you should be doing on a regular basis with your spouse. Like you guys are a team. You're not competitors against one another Mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things. And so keeping that in mind, and if you feel like you and your partner, you and your friend are like that from a competitive sense, like I've lost friends because I've been that way with them, because we've been so competitive with one another that we've drove each other insane and argued and all kinds of stuff. And it's not it's not conducive to a a positive relationship as a whole. And you've got to work past those things or work through those things. And both parties have to be willing to do so. Like one party can't be bought in and the other's like, well, I'm going to say this, but like in my mind, I'm actually working to fuck you up. Basically (laughs) I am here to win absolutely everything in every way possible. And everybody's got to be on board and you've got to see the greater good. And so that takes time. And while we definitely are competitive against one another, it's not to make the other person lose. Like, I'm not going to not say something to you that could cause you to not accomplish the goal that you need to or not push you to do what you need to do. So we've been even touching base on what our steps are throughout the day, asking if the other person needs to go on another W, being able to see, hey, do you have you tracked your food? What more do you need to eat? So we're still encouraging each other and wanting the success of both of us. 
But I also know that Alex knows I'm going to get the daily chore done. And that means that he's, again, not going to let me down or he's not going to be the, quote, loser in this of not getting the daily chore done. So that's going to push him to get it done. So we're using that competitive nature and that really positive aspect, which I really enjoy that we can still uplift each other while kind of competing against each other as well. I agree with you. Competition is awesome. I'm always going to be a painfully competitive person. What are your biggest takeaways from today's episode? Well, Buddha once said that life is suffering. And while I do agree that there is suffering within life, I think that there is a lot that you can personally do to alleviate that pain or suffering or frustration. And so my biggest takeaway here is taking complete ownership of what you can change. And you had mentioned it in the beginning of controlling the controllables, but it comes down to that first question I asked as well is, how can I make things easier for myself? And sometimes that's getting out of your own way, but sometimes that's taking time to audit and reflect and see how you can use different tendencies to your advantage instead of looking like for myself of saying, I'm always late, I'm late to everything, I'm always going to be late. I don't need to speak that truth over myself. There are things that I can put in place to ensure that that's not the case any longer, but I need to take ownership of that and take action to be able to accomplish that. So I think it really comes down to ownership and just being able to be so honest with yourself about what needs to be done. My greatest takeaway is going to be that identifying the frustrations and identifying the moments in which you're telling yourself to just do better and being able to problem solve from there, understanding that maybe that frustration and and those different things that come about are things that need a different way of going about. How you've been taught to handle these different components may not be the best way for you to handle these different things within your life, and that is okay. You don't need to be exactly like your your spouse, or you don't need to be exactly like your siblings or how your parents taught you how to exactly do things. You may need to make some adjustments to best fit your life. And so understanding that You can customize things significantly more than maybe what you thought, and it doesn't have to be as rigid as you uh, previously had had followed, I think is a very freeing feeling. It opens up your mind. It takes a weight off of your shoulders. And by finding these little hacks, you're going to be so much happier. I love that. Perfect way to end it. And I would love if any of you guys watching on YouTube could go ahead and leave your favorite hacks, whether they're life hacks, macro hacks, fitness hacks, because it might help someone else out, or maybe I will adopt some of your guys' hacks that might help my life. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. We'll catch you in the next one.